also sweet. Last night's sweet. Test. Just helping keep things in perspective as well. Exam two of three. We're going to look over the homework. I want to make sure that you understand everything about normalization. Then I'm going to show you how to look up the MySQL Server account, MySQL Server database, and so on. Then I'm going to show you how to make tables. And what you're going to do for me next week is make me a script that connects through database, drops all your tables, makes all your tables. And that's what we're doing. How many of you know SQL? Okay, so good. For most of you, this will be like brand new. For the rest of you, this may be the baby steps where you just go, okay, okay. But we gotta, we gotta do this in small pieces. Let's start with the normalization homework. Uh, so first normal form is all this stuff, which I did in like a one point font, right? But lists and a whole bunch of things and horse name and race ID are the primary key. And I tell you, if I know the horse name, I know stuff. So that's a partial functional dependency. If I know the owner ID, I know the owner name. That's a transitive, and that's a partial functional dependency. Are we all on that shit music together? Thank you. OK, so we're going to resolve the partial functional dependencies to get to second normal form. So starting from first normal form, I'm going to give it a name, say horse. If I know the horse name, primary key, I know these things. So horse name came from here in first normal form, so it's going to pick up a foreign key attribute. And I'm not going to repeat date of birth, gender, owner name, and owner ID. So I could rewrite that now, but I see race ID is going to come out of there too. So I'll give race ID a name. I'll call it race. Race ID is the primary key. Track conditions, total person, race data, attributes. Race ID came from here, so that's going to pick up a foreign key constraint. These duplicates will come out of here, and then I'll rewrite first normal form as lists, horse name, primary and foreign, race ID, primary and foreign, and the only things that remained were start position and final, and that's my set of relations in second normal form. The answers are up. Questions so far? No? Okay, so working from second normal form, I have to get rid of the one transitive dependency. I'm going to give this a name. I call it owner. If I know the owner ID, primary key, I know the owner name. I stole owner ID in second normal form from right there. That's going to pick up a foreign key constraint. I've accounted for owner name, so that's going to come out. I need to rewrite horse. Horse, horse name didn't change, it's still primary. Date of birth, Gender, owner ID now picks up a foreign key constraint. Race and lists did not change, but I need to rewrite them down here because that's my set of tables in third normal form. Yes? I missed the foreign key out. Can you explain that owner ID and the Okay, so here's my transitive dependency. I need to give it a name. Doesn't matter what I call it. I chose owner. If I know the owner name, if I know the owner ID, I know the owner name. So owner ID is primary key. Owner name is just not. Where did I steal this from in second normal form? I stole it from right there. So just like going from first to second, that's going to pick up a foreign key attribute. Owner name is going to come out of here. So I'll rewrite horse as horse name, primary key, date of birth, gender, owner ID, foreign. Yes, wherever I stole it from. So I stole horse name from here, it picked up a foreign key attribute. I stole race ID from here, it picked up a foreign key attribute. Because we have one table full of tables, and as I pull it out, I need to still join them together in some fashion. Yes, sorry to tell the red line, but owner ID on the, uh, the third is just foreign, right? Not foreign primary? Um, yeah. So I, know, I can probably spend the rest of my day getting rid of all of this. So yeah, hey, I just want to show. Yeah, no, no, it's just foreign. Other questions? Can you break down the? I get confused on the. Was it in the second normal form where we call those two different things? Like you, the partial. The total. Okay. This is a partial functional dependency, because these are dependent on part of the composite primary key. Okay. Just that. This is transitive because it's a non-key attribute that's dependent upon another non-key attribute. Okay. 
and then because the partials, those are the ones you break down in the second one. To get from first to second, we resolve the partials. Okay. To get from second to third, we resolve the transitive. Okay. Other questions? Yes. I have the on the third one form, form. I have the race line and the list line. You mean the order of them? Yeah. The order of the lines doesn't matter. Okay, let's look at the second one. And this is more likely to look, this is much more likely what the test one will look like in terms of I like to use letters or random words. So we have a relation here that has a composite primary key with three parts, and then D through I as attributes. And I tell you that if you know A, you know D, E, H, so D, E, and H are a partial functional dependency, right? And I is dependent on B and C, but not the whole thing, so that's a partial. That's a transitive, because F is dependent upon G, and that's a transitive, because H is dependent upon E. Everybody comfy with that? So remember the advice I gave you, I would write PFD, PFD, TD, TD on a test, so I don't get like test anxiety and get freaking out. To go from first to second, I resolve the PFDs. That needs a name, it could be any name. I chose A prime. If you know A, primary key, you know D, E, H. I stole A from here, that's gonna pick up a foreign key. D, E, and H are gonna come out of here. If I know B and C, I know I. I give it some name, I said B, C prime. If I know B primary, C primary, I know I. I stole B and C from right here. Foreign key, foreign key, get rid of I. Rewriting relationship one, A, B, and C are all now primary and foreign. And what remains is F and G, and that's my set of relations to second normal form. To go from second to third, I have to resolve the transitive dependencies. And it's the same process. I want to give this a name. I can name it anything I want, but I called it G prime. If I know G, primary key, I know F. I stole G, I'm working from second now. I stole G right there. That picks up a foreign key attribute. I've already counted for F. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite relation one. A, B, C, primary and foreign. G is now foreign. If I know E, I know H. I give it a name. E prime. E primary. H, regular attribute. I stole E from here. Picks up a foreign key attribute. H is not going to be repeated, so A prime becomes A primary. D. E is foreign. And I bring down BC, or yeah, I bring down BC just to complete my set of relations in third normal form. How it is? Oh, I'm sorry. Go for it. Uh, on A, A prime on third, uh, why didn't you have H on there also? Well, because, A, because I said A, if I know A, A I'm, 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 I guess I'm understanding. Oh, uh, wait. Um, you know A, you know D, E, H. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, how did I get there? I had A, D, E, H, but I got there because I stole E. E became foreign. And then H, so, so A is still just prime. D, and E picked up a foreign key. There's no reason A would pick up a foreign key after me. I'm not answering your question. No. Try it again. I, I was wondering why, what happened to the H. The H? Because if you know A, you know D, E, H. If I know A, I know D, E, H. A, D, E, H. And then, and then I stole E, and I counted for H here. So I got rid of H. H is here. Okay. If I know E, I know H. So, E, but I'm not going to also leave H here because it's here. So when I bring A prime down, H is gone. Cool. You don't look convinced. <laughs> well, let's start with the basics. Am I correctly understanding what you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. You understand the question. Okay, right. but you're confused why H isn't still hanging out down there? Yes. Okay. When I say if I know E, I know H, I make a new table. Right. And H is name. Right? And I steal it out of this table. And I leave that as foreign. 
but I take H with me. Why would I leave name here in this table, man? I'm accounting, I'll put it in the new table. I still want to put it over here. So I'm going to get rid of it, man. I don't want to have duplicate okay. stuff. Okay. Unless it's primary key or key, I don't want duplicates. Okay. Yes. And I did that throughout. Every time I moved one of those, I got rid of the axes. Sure. Will you have us be on the exam doing something like this into an ERD? Yeah. Or something okay. like that becomes the Oh, no, 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 no. Each one of these problems stand alone. This, this is a problem. Okay. This is a thing. I would never have you do anything after that. Okay. Is uh, G primary in relation one? Or four, sorry. Uh, yeah. In relation one? No, I'm sorry, in the, in the third okay. natural function. Okay. Is C, C is primary because I said if you know B and C, you know I. It's a common a primary key, B, C. Other questions? You said, um, I know you said you never went from step one all the way down to step three in one go, correct? Can you said the trouble again? You said we never go from step one all the way down to step three in one go. That's right. Well. But, but, but before that, so what I was saying is like, we have the transitive transcendent dependencies. Like, if you know G, you know F. But it's consistent when you, when you know G, you know S, why couldn't you just move G to S of a transcendence of a TD, the dependency, all the way from step one to step two? And E, if you know E, you know H, you just move that down, because it's always consistent in step three. <coughs> why are you looking at Because <laughs> you're speaking heresy. <laughs> no, but, but it's always consistent. I'm just wondering, like, I'm, and I'm not trying to confuse it, I'm just trying to figure it out. I know it's heresy, but. and then work the partial, and then convert the partials down. Mm. You would mess up your E and H. My E and H? You're, you, you'd mess up your E and H if you skipped the middle step. How? Because you break this out, and then you break out the E and H, which leaves A prime to look like this. You can't go from here to there and get that. OK. I'm OK with you, but what I'm saying, man, yeah. yeah. That's a good example. Don't let me say because I said so. Because I mean, it's just the way we do it, man. <laughs> I'm just, you can have that argument. I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just wondering. I mean, I'm pretty sure somebody else did too. The reason, the, 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 real, the real reason why I literally is that. Because I can make one, I can, I can make one of these such that if you go from here to here, you'll mess up. This is still one. You can't go from here to here and resolve. You can't do all these in one shot because this breaks out and then the E and H break out of that and then that transforms it to that. I don't think you can do it in one shot. I could be wrong. I don't think I am. Well, I'm saying you're going to say the transcendency and you can move to step three. So just that. Just that. You probably right in this case in this case in this case and then you move the track see i mean there's all of my limitations here i'm not that into normalization i would rather redo the erd in my head but i i'm willing to go out on a limb and say that there's good use cases for why you have to go here to here here to here or it'll mess you up okay i could be wrong though i mean i'm i'm easy i can say that easily i got no issues whatsoever you're just asking just out of curiosity, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah man. I mean, you could, yeah. Be, you could be right, but I don't. I, my sense says you can't, you can't just skip this. Now, if this was a non-composite primary key, of course, you'd already be down here. You can't have a partial functional dependency if that's not composite. But I mean, I see what you're saying. I just, I really, honestly, don't have a great answer for you because I don't know with certainty. So I'm not about to pretend like I'm going to give you an answer with certainty. I at least hated that in classes. <laughs> teacher would be like, this is the answer. And you're sitting there going, it doesn't feel right, man. It doesn't feel like you know that's the answer. I don't know. You're probably right. You might be right. I don't know. I think you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? The correspondingly brilliant non-answers. This is what I do for a living. 
So we feel good about this? I hope that answer is yes. Because we ain't coming back to this. Let's start new stuff. SQL. New to SQL. Are you SQL? SQL code or SQL? Good luck. Okay. Um. <laughs> 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 It is still water in our server rack. I have a server. It's an old, scrungy Dell server. With one of the two power supplies plugged in. No data backup, no UPS. This is my server. In fact, I'm proud of it. I love my server. And I'm forcing it to do 422, so I don't have to do it with IT. And this is what your account's going to be based on. Okay, now look, I made you all databases. You're going to log into the database with your OK short username. Does anybody not know what I mean when I say that? Don't be shy. Okay. My Oklahoma State name is jim.berkman at okc.edu. But I also have a short username, which is jberkma. Now, does this make sense? Oh, okay. Ring it a bell? You should have a short version of you. If you don't know, go out to your ok.okc.edu account, log in, and you'll be able to find the short version of you. If you still don't know, send me an email, and I'll look up the short version. Okay. You're going to log into my database with your OK short username and the password. Now listen to me, people. The password is capital A, B, C, D, one, two, three, exclamation mark. I've never had a semester go by without some student emailing me and going, I can't get into my account. And after many, many emails, it turns out they left off the exclamation mark. And when I say why, they say, oh, I thought you were just like excited in the sentence. <laughs> I kid you not, I save these emails because I'm like, so you think being an intelligent person that I would have changed that by now, but I refuse to, <laughs> damn it. You all will put this password in, capital A, B, C, D, one, two, three, exclamation mark. This is a password to be tuned to my single server. <laughs> now, we're going to use micro, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Now look. A database management system runs on a server, and it manages the database. It does all the database things, and we can connect to it programmatically. We can connect to it through Excel. We connect to all sorts of interfaces. We're going to use Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, because this is a great interface and kind of made for that. But it's nothing special about it. It's just one way to access the database. They're not married together. We're going to use this interface. You have several choices for using this interface. You have a couple. But I'm going to give you the right way to do it. You can download it yourself from this link. I'm going to say those words again. From this link. <laughs> Don't be all snowflakey and Google it, or you'll down, you run the risk. Somehow people download the wrong thing. You can download it there and put it on your computer if you want. That's cool. Or you can download the VMware Horizon client. Now, Who's, who here did, has never done that? Who here has never hooked up to the virtual lab machines at Oklahoma State University? Okay, on, God, I, could, I might be lying to you. I don't think. Let's see, let, let's see if I'm lying to you. Hold on a second. In terms of things that I put on here for Bright Space Stage. Let's see, online. Okay, say, EDU, uh, online. Why doesn't it autocorrect EUD to EDU? Because I mean, obviously, come on. Okay, me, jump to these, my own equipment, at the state, so thank you. Is this class content or content? Slides, symbols, and handouts. 
traveling in a group by. Ooh, I didn't. Okay, I'll move out first. So wait a minute. And of course, import, export, copy, components. Search for offering. Select the dot, you were just over it. Cool. Yeah, right there, over to the left. No, left. Right there, there you go, now. But there was nothing there that's stupid. There's that stupid light gray, everything yeah. has to look yeah. like an icon. <laughs> 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 it's not like it or anything. Probably under some of this handout. Oh, there you go. Connected virtual labs. Don't you have a video up about that? Yes. Yeah, it's in our other class, though. Yeah. Oh. Our other oh, teacher shared your. I shared my video with all of the faculty. Um, yeah. It should be. Is it me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, if you. Well, that's what I'm putting up here is that video. Go to you now. You got it. It's a fine damn video. Too. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it is. Wait, who said that over on the left side? Who? Did you suggest my video? What do you mean? Oh, it was, oh, was you. Okay, you guys. Was it you, you were the one who know how to do this. All right. What? No, I'm, it's okay. It's, it's, this is all me. I am under medicated. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so wait, so let's see how that's and connecting the virtual lab and that's so let's see how that's. That's right, this is what my life looks like, people I'm trying to make this all work. Whoa, what was me? And this away. See, look at that. It's empty and it takes forever to leave. Okay. Now, if you have this video connected to virtual labs, you can watch that. What you have to do is first make a VPN connection to Stillwater. So you have to download a client to make that happen. If you're watching my video, I'm explaining clearly how to do this. It's a great video, right? Yeah. Why are you nodding your head? Have you I seen watch the video? video? No. Have you seen the video? Yeah, I, I started watching it, and then I was like, it has nothing to do with the fire. We already have to stop. <laughs> 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 People say you don't know how to do this, man. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> you know, we never said that, did we? See, you have to make the VPN connection. <laughs> then the second part, and you're going to log into the VPN with your OK State credentials. Then you're going to open up the virtual desktop, and you're going to log in with your OK State credentials. And you'll see two different probably three, see three different virtual areas you can get into, but one will be the OSU Spear School Classroom Lab, some nonsense like that. One will be MSIS. Either one of those has the SQL Server Management Studio on it, and you can use either one. Okay? This is, despite everything that's just happened, infinitely easier than putting it on your own computer, really. Okay? What you cannot do is put SQL Server on your own computer and use your own database for this class. Because I want to be able to look and see, did you do the things I asked you to do? So you have to use my server. And I would suggest you just using the virtual machines because it is actually really, really cool. Okay. Your database will be F17, sorry, not F16, but I'm going to show you here in a second. So this is SQL Server Management Studio. It looks like this. Um, it might be SQL Server 2017 Management Studio on the things you access. It doesn't matter. I've just remoted it into my server that has all the database stuff. So when you get on here, what's going to happen 
You shall see an early screen that looks like this. And it'll say server type, database engine. We're going to skip server name for a second. Authentication is SQL Server authentication, because there's no way I'm actually hooking you guys up to Active Directory. That would take effort on my part. The server name, however, needs to be, OK, you don't actually really have to probably have the TCP colon, but whatever. 139.78.8.180, comma, listen to my words, people, comma, that's right, that's stupid, isn't it? Port 22. That's right, they're delimiting a, court, a port with a comma rather than a colon. I don't, I don't know, but it's not a typo on my part. 139.78.8.180, comma 22. SQL Server Authentication, your user, your short username, and capital A, B, C, D, one, two, three, exclamation mark will get you into your database. And on the server, I have one instance of SQL Server running, and I made all these databases. This is, this is all my database students this semester. You're in there somewhere, S17 underscore some short version of you. So what I did, for those of you that don't know nothing about database, which is why you're here, right? Here's my database instance. Look, there's a server, well, it's actually a server, right? There's a server running Windows Server or whatever the heck I put on it that has an instance of SQL Server running. And sometimes people look at the box and say that's the database. They could look at the instance that I'm running, because I could run multiple instances, and say that's the database. Obviously, the things called databases are databases. When people say database, it can mean a lot of things. But what I did here at the database level was I made you logins. And then I assigned your login permissions, which in your case is very little. It's like, I can get on. Then I made you databases. And then within your databases, Sorry, whoever this is, if you're in this classroom. If I go down and look at you as a user in your database, we can say that you're a database owner. So you don't have a lot of authority with my big database, but within your database, you have all the power. So in case you're interested at all, oh no, you probably don't need to be interested. <laughs> well, no, it's like I don't get the file somewhere to this side. But I did all that with scripts. So what I did, and this is actually important, I go out to Banner. God, it's horrible. But I go to Banner and I get your short username and all the information about you. And then I put an Excel file. I'm going to show you how to do this later. But I then manipulate the Excel file to make a whole bunch of insert statements. And I create a database table full of you people. And then I have a script that makes logins for you and assigns your permissions. And I have a second script that makes databases that gives you permissions to the database. What does all that mean? If you send me an email that says, I think you got my username wrong, you're wrong. Because I never touched it. At no point in time has there been any data entry on the part of my fat little fingers. So you do log in with your, okay, use short username and capital A, B, C, D, one, two, three, exclamation part, mark. You have to believe that that's true. Emails that I get. Okay, so here's my, here's my database, AAA classroom, AAA classroom. And when I click new query, what I get here is a buffer. And it's named SQL query dot SQL. That's just a text file. It could be named .tax. This .sql will make it automatically sucked up and used by SQL Server Management Studio. But whatever I type in here in this buffer will get executed when I go up here and click Execute from top to bottom. So I could put words in here and save this as a text document, pull it up at any time and say Execute all the things top to bottom. And this is what we actually do in the real world. You don't so much sit down and be like, I'm going to change the production database. That's not how it works. You're going to actually put your changes and things in a script. That script is going to go in the code repository so that auditors can see what we did to the database. 
so that we actually have a track. I mean, it's going to go through, you know, I want to write this script, I want to run it on my local version of the instance of the database to make sure that it's accurate and not messing things up, and my application then works with it. And then eventually someone else will push that out to reduction when we're all holding our breath and hope it works right. Okay, so we do these scripts. I'm going to teach you how to do a script that drops all your tables and remakes them. Because if I'm sitting at my station, right, and I'm going after the code repository and getting some things and fixing some things, and I, I want to see does that work with the data, I want to run it on my local instance of the database, but maybe I'll do something destructive and I want to be able to set that back up again. And besides which, we run these scripts, we hold them in the code repository, so everyone knows what we did. It's the living memory of what we did in the database, literally. Unless you want to lose your job, you don't sit down and be like, I'm just changed things. I'm going to make Amazon should be faster. <laughs> this is not how this works. This is how you end up flipping burgers. Hey, so I'm going to shock you. When we do queries, I'll show you how to end up flipping burgers for your whole life. Okay? Does everyone understand what I'm talking about? You need to get access to SQL Server Management Studio, which for my money says use the virtual things, but if you want to put that on your machine, go for it. But if you go for it, click the damn link in my <laughs> slides, because I don't know what it is people download, but there's something else that is associated with SQL Server that isn't this at all, and, uh, and, and they install it, and they're like, it doesn't work. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Um, do this soon, please. If you do this Tuesday night, I'm not going to be able to help you in time for you to get your homework done. But it's not. And odds are somewhere close to 110% that it's your problem, your fault, your issue, end user error. It is, the, in fact, the ID10T interface. Are there any IT professionals in here that are not familiar with that nomenclature? No? I'm going to help. It is the I. D10T interface. <laughs> Come on, people. That's IT 101. ID10T interface. <laughs> this is how you troll your end users all day long. I mean, nothing but love for the end users because they keep us at work, but it's the ID10T interface. Okay, if you're having trouble walking in, and please don't be offended. I'm the biggest idiot in the classroom. That's my wife, who loves me more than life itself, but I am the smartest. What was that I told my boss the other day? I said about the smartest spoon in the drawer. Sharpest spoon in the drawer, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, literally. Okay, so you're going to log in, and you get access to your database. Access is in the right term of accessing your database, not database. Right? So there's so many, so many ways that this can go wrong. And then we're going to work from here. So let me tell you, what, tell, let me tell you how this all works out. Um, slides, I need slides. Okay, so I'm going to teach you SQL, but because we're working with Microsoft, it's technically TSQL, which is Transact SQL, which is their flavor of SQL, which is 99% SQL, 1% stupid stuff that they did. Okay, Oracle SQL is 99% SQL, 1% stupid stuff Oracle did. Riz repeat that story for every version of everybody is like, and then we'll do this one special thing, whatever. Like Oracle is their character too. Just like, why? Right? Yay, barely. So really, you're learning TSQL. Here's the link to go to all the answers for TSQL, but this, this is our profession, ultimately, right? This should be on all of our resumes. Can Google, not good Google food. Right? TSQL, whatever it is you want. You can change your password if you want. I literally don't care. Google TSQL, change password, and change your password. Or whatever. Right? This is why I don't make you buy a book in this class, because it's stupid. It's all there. It's online. Right? Relational databases haven't changed in forever. If you want to be a DBA, or if you're digging this at all, the best way to get into it is through Microsoft SQL Server, and this is the single best website, period, for Microsoft SQL Server. Unparalleled community. This is it. The forums here are indispensable, the articles are indispensable, and it's been up for a really long time. Just don't be an idiot and go out there and like post tomorrow. Because they'll just be like, did you read anything? Have you seen the search function? You know, basic stuff 101. And then Redgate is where you want to buy all your tools for SQL Server. No, I don't get paid from them. And I just literally, they're great. This is your resource right here. Who wants to be a DBA when they grow up? Anybody? 
how to convert it, this is this, man. Write this down. This is the place. And he, there's even some good in the forums. I actually found some good um, second career people that have been like, I was doing this, and then I did this, and now I'm a DBA, and, and all sorts of information on how that worked out. It's very, very cool. Much love to this website. When I was doing this out in the wild corporate world, this actually was before Google. Because you can find full scripts out here, man. You can look like a genius. Okay. Again, IT 101. Okay, so SQL has two different sides to it. There's DDL, which we use to make the structures. And DML, which we use to put data in and do data inside the structures. When you do DDL, or data definition language, when you execute the code, it's committed and done. Really, with DML, you have to, you have to manually commit it. We'll, we won't see this. Because in the SQL Server Management Studio environment, it does it for us. Okay, so we're kind of cheating a little bit, but I'm comfortable with that given, given the newness of the topic. So DDL makes structures. It creates, it alters, and it drops. Super important words. We don't delete anything. We delete things inside structures. We create, we alter, we drop structures. Stuff that you're going to intuitively know. But to create a table, we need to give it a name. Field names, field data types, field sizes, constraints. Okay. Every table in your database has to have a unique name within the database. Every field has to have a unique name. You already know this, because I've pre-taught you a lot of things. Let's talk about data types. So you'd expect this, right? There's int. Everyone here should be familiar with int. Jim's rules are particularly brilliant with ints. Okay? You know ints can go up to 10 characters, but not all 10. So I just think of int as it can hold all the things that are 9 long. If it's more than that, it's a big int. If it's less than that, it's a small int. And if you really want, to, if you really want there's a tiny int, which is a byte. Right? But I just, I just go int, 9. Yeah, I could push it further, but I don't want to waste my time thinking about it. Okay. okay, we have decimal and numeric, which are interchangeable, although one will eventually get deprecated. Does anyone not know what deprecated means? Don't be shy. Everyone's on top of deprecated. Like phasing out, not going to use that no more. Okay. So we need to know precision and scale. Precision is how many characters. Scale is how many of those characters is to the right of the decimal point. Precision 5, scale 2, the max is 999.99. Precision, scale. Scale is how much of the precision is to the right of the decimal point. And we need to specify that for decimal and numeric. We're not going to do floats because we're not going to do sciencey stuff, but yay, barely, it exists. And then there's dates. Dates vary wildly between database systems. How do you handle them? Um, SQL is in general, you'll find that they're all treated as um, text. Uh, the default SQL Server is year, month, day, but this is set up as a US one, so you can do month, day, year. And it's actually pretty forgiving of other variations as well. And I want to say, because I get my database systems mixed up, I want to say it's reasonably flexible about the delimiters, but I might be thinking about my SQL. We're going to use date time, mostly, maybe date, but there's a bunch of other things we can do. Um, we got care and bear care, or char and bar char, however you want to roll. Bear care says, what's the maximum size you want? So like if I say bear care 30 for a name, and I put Jim in there, it will automatically size down to Jim, almost. It has a one byte buffer. We don't care about one byte buffers, Walmart cares about one byte buffers. That gets expensive. So if we know exactly the length of something, like state abbreviations are always two characters, I'm going to say care two. This is going to be way more efficient in the long run. Otherwise, we're going to use Veracare and try and get it reasonably size. Reasonably, right? It's not super important. We're not going to be like Veracare max for everything. That's just sloppy. Okay. <coughs> if I was a reasonable human being, I would force you to use Unicode character strings. How many of you are familiar with Unicode and know why I just said that? Any of you? 
One person? Okay. Two people. In the real world, globally, if you don't use Unicode character strings, you're just, you're done. Okay? You can't express a whole bunch of stuff with regular character strings. But, and if, if you want to know why I'm saying these words, that link will help you. I don't do it for this class because I don't want you to get, I want you to have just laser focus on the thing that I'm teaching you, and I don't want you worrying about should I be doing Unicode character strings, but in the real world, all your character strings should be Unicode character strings. Can I get an amen? amen. Yes. Because it's got to be that way. But we're going we're to limit that for this class. Now, we can also hold binary. Now, y'all took blah, blah, blah from me, right? Everybody? Most everybody? A lot of people, right? That's what we call it internally because it's me talking so much. In that class, I, I, make, I make the point that all the ones and zeros in the computer make sense to us, and likewise, because of a code page, right? ASCII, UTFA, something like that. When we store most stuff in a database, database is still attached to the code page. We can store raw ones and zeros, binary, variable binaries, blobs, things like that. It, it, it just says these ones and zeros aren't attached to a code page, so do whatever you want to do with them programmatically when you pull them out. Things like images, um, there's really strong opinions about do I store database images in the database or do I store references to the images in the database and put them on the hard drive. It depends on a billion factors, right? If they're thumbnails, maybe I put them in the database, right, et cetera. So we can store flat, regular binary, which again, we're not gonna care about, because we're learning the basic server. The database has metadata about everything that's happening in the database, and they're all in these sys dot whatever. So if I were to say select all the things from sys dot tables, I would actually get a listing of all the tables going on in the database. And we can do that for every object in the database. We can see what they are. So we ultimately have control over all that as well. But let's start with the basics. To create a table, I'm going to say create table and give it a name. I'm going to throw up a left parentheses. I'm going to give it an attribute name and then declare the data type and then a comma. So student, create table my students, student ID and comma, S name very care 30, comma, student date of birth date, comma, S class care two, and parentheses, semicolon. Now, all SQL statements have to be terminated with a semicolon. Let's say that again. All SQL statements have to be terminated with, with a semicolon. Microsoft SQL Server, however, is like your friend. And if you just put one line up there, it's gonna be like, well, you must have meant to terminate this with a semicolon, so I'm gonna run this for you anyway. And you can develop stupidly bad habits like this. Okay? It's just like if you learn database using just MySQL, you're going to be hosed because MySQL is like a lot of puppies. It's like, I'll do that. and let you do horrible things. I want you to get religious about all your SQL statements ending with a semicolon. Trust me, you'll thank me later, right? Because if you get in the habit of not doing that, you start actually doing stuff, you'll, you're going to have to unlearn. We don't want that. Okay. We know about constraints because we don't. We've done them. We've done them. Integrity constraints we know about. Primary key constraints, form key constraints. We can also do value constraints, but honestly, we don't. Anybody want to tell me why we don't? Yeah, right, because our developers will beat us senseless. And we will really not be able to complain about it either, okay? Because if your developer goes to do something and then finds out now, I apologize if this example offends anyone. I don't intend to. I've just been using it for like 20 years, and I should probably change it. But the example would be to say that S gender is either M or F. Okay? I could code that in. But, oh, the example comes a little later. I could code that in, but we're not going to, because when a developer dude goes in there and he wants to put in pansexual or unicorn or attack helicopter or whatever, and it doesn't let him do it, He's going to be seriously unhappy because it's going to take him two hours to figure out why it's not working, and then he's going to come over here and throttle me and be like, "No, that's not your domain, man. You're you're getting out of control." And I'm legitimately going to be like, "Yeah, I know, All right? Just because you can't do a thing doesn't mean you should do a thing." But we can. Now, every time I make a constraint in a database, it's a thing, and I should name things. If I don't name things, the database will name things, and it will pick names that I won't understand. They won't be very friendly for humans. 
So we name all of our constraints, and by convention, if it's a primary key, we're gonna put PK either in front or in back. And I don't care what you do, be consistent though in what you do, and that's true for all your coding standards. Obviously, you have to do what your shop says, but be consistent in how you do all your things forever. You'll, future you will thank past you. Anybody take programming last year? Anybody this year look at your code from last year? <laughs> How'd that feel? Was it good? Yeah. How'd you feel about your code? We kind of hating past year a little bit? We kind of thinking like documentation, son, right? Yeah. <coughs> Try looking at a code that you wrote three years ago. You'd be like, my script on my Minecraft server, I was looking at the other day just going. <laughs> <laughs> Literally had no clue what it was. I was just like, wow, that's kludgy and bad. And wait, what? And then I was like, it works. <laughs> Copy, paste. <you> know? <laughs> so we want to name stuff PK, FK for foreign keys. These are standards. CC, check condition, MN for not null. Because our database by default is going to be null allowed. We need to say when we want not nulls. UK for uni. So I might say like SIDPK as a constraint name. If I don't name them, the system won't. From your experience, what is your idea of best practices with regards to naming that? It completely depends on your shop. Ultimately, and I'm not, I'm not trying to dodge this question, where you go to work will define the language you use, the standards that you use, A to Z. And the software you use. Because yes. that's what we've come up with, with like printer names, you know, with, yep. with all this information. Then you look at a list of them in an interface that only shows the first 10 characters, exactly. and you're like, yeah, we kind of wish we had put that part at the front. Now, if you're, it, if you're so doing your own development, mm -hmm. I, I still maintain the most important thing is to be super consistent. Right. Don't, don't change mystery. Be one way all the, all the time. Then even if you have to train, if you have to onboard an intern or something, they, they you teach them one thing once. It's inconsistency, and that's why shops, even though I'm not a huge fan of like, like I would probably die and wither if I had to go in a Microsoft shop, right? Some places just use Microsoft, because I'm kind of an open source mentality. But I get it, you have to decide this is how we do it, or you're dead in the water to begin with. Same thing here, just pick a convention and stick with it. But when you see PKFK, these are standards, okay? So let's just look at this. And there's various ways to do this. And when I say the right way and the wrong way, I'm just expressing Jim's opinion, but you're in my class, so this is now gospel, okay? <laughs> Create table dog, dog ID int primary key, go. Stop, let's talk about go. Go has nothing to do with SQL at all. Go has everything to do with the Microsoft SQL Server interface. This is the buffer, and when I hit execute, it's gonna execute the code from top to bottom. Go simply says, hey, wait, go execute that before you continue on down the list. Because, for example, use database blah, 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 I'd actually like it to go execute that before it does anything else. Otherwise, it's going to not actually swap database. So Go is nice. When do you use Go? I still don't know. So I tend to overuse it, because you can never go wrong using Go. But you won't, Go is not part of the single server, it's part of this interface. Okay, so create table dog, dog ID int primary key. That works, I'm okay with that. It's not my favorite thing, but it's okay. I could say create double dog, dog ID int, constraint dog PK, I named that, that's my name. Primary key dog ID, I hate this. I hate this with a passion, this is bad and horrible. I don't ever do this in my class. I hate it. The right way, the best way, Really is to do this. Create table dog, dog ID int, not null, go. Alter table dog, add constraint, constraint name, primary key, dog ID. That's nice. Why do I like that? Anybody? Got an opinion? Right set the same. Yeah. Would you say that's easy to read? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. I mean, you're right, but let's look at an example. So if I go over here, and um, we'll look at this script. So use draw, and yeah, I cheated actually on this. I'm just last primary keys, but alter table, alter table, alter table, alter table. It's super easy to read. Future me is going to dig me for doing that. And scripts can get really, really long. 
So this is really nice. So I did this religiously, which I didn't in this example. I should make a better example. But I mean, really, it's a little extra work, but why not put all your constraints after all your tables? It's clean, it's neat, it's professional. I know we tend not to do what we want, what we should do, but this isn't that expensive in terms of time or effort, and it makes your scripts look great. And if you're just going out in the workplace and you do this, people will notice and appreciate. They'll be like, oh, you're know, on point. You know? Literally, if you write sloppy code, it may get it done, but everyone's going to like wince a little bit, like, God, I don't want to have to maintain that. Okay? If you're a consultant, then it's great, because then they have to rehire you two years down the road because nobody can read your code. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hating either at all. Saying I think there's a lot of consulting gigs that come up because people are in a hurry to write really interesting code, and then, and of course, you're in no better place. You're getting paid for it. Like yes, it's not going to do this. <laughs> not at all. Okay, you have to do it this way for a composite primary key, though. Create table roster and start your ID get not null. And I have to say not null, or it's not going to let me turn it into a primary key. Student ID int not null, grade decimal four comma two, so the grade can go up to nine nine dot nine nine. Semicolon, go, too many goes in here. Alter table roster, add constraint, roster PK, I made up that name, primary key, instructor ID, comma, student ID, comma, it's a primary key. Because I cannot say instructor ID int primary key, student ID int primary key because of what I've been railing against this day one when they keep telling you it's one primary key, it's one primary key, it's one primary key. If I go blah, primary key, blah, primary key, it's like, like what, you think there's two primary keys? And it won't do it. You have to go ahead and do it like this. You may also find in your homework, depending entirely on how you do it, you may have to go ahead and do a foreign key constraint in that same blah, comma, blah way for an associative entity. I didn't want to make note of that. Okay. Yes. Uh, the capital ID on the, the top part and then the bottom script. Uh, just the name the case. No, the names are not case sensitive. Okay. Okay. That's cool. okay. Good point, though. Good. Neither is white space. That's what I was If you wanted to, you could put all sorts of stupid tabs in there. Okay. <laughs> Foreign key constraints are going to come as no surprise to you because I've been making you write them and just darn your pseudocode. Okay, here's a, here's a script. Let's look at this. Use test go. Why didn't that work for you? Use test go. Why is it not going to work for you? It's nothing other. It's not your database, man. You don't have a database test. Okay? Just so beat the first one of you that sent me an email and go, like, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Use F17 underscore. You know, it's not that I'm like just making these stories up. It's like yeah. every semester, someone who's half asleep in class will be like, oh, it didn't work. <laughs> right? <laughs> drop table dog, drop table owner. I'd like to run this and run this and run this and run this. But we're going to look at this in a second. Too many goes. Ignore all my goes. That goes important. All the rest aren't. Create table owner, owner ID and primary key, name very care 30. Okay. Create table dog, dog ID and primary key, name very care 30. Owner ID and. Owner ID is a foreign key, right? Owner, dog, example you've heard a million times. Alter table dog, act constraint. I made up this name. Owner ID FK. Foreign key, owner ID references owner, owner ID. Oh, it's just like the stuff you've been writing. There's one problem with that. If I have another place in my database, where owner ID is a foreign key, and I write owner ID FK, it's going to throw an error. Because those constraint names have to be unique. Okay? That's going to happen to you in your homework if you didn't just listen to what I said. So you can either say owner ID FK1, or actually, I've, still, I've gotten now into the habit of, I would probably write dog owner ID FK. I would put the table name, then the attribute name, and then FK, just to make sure that they're all unique. It's probably much better much better practice. Okay. Now look, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this code. Although I'm not going to say you use test. Actually, let's just do this. We'll go over here, and I this buffer, I can go ahead and copy and paste into and from this buffer. I can also save it. File, save as, now. If you don't save it in your student drive or on a USB drive, it's going to go away. 
not just because it's a virtual machine, but you're not saving anything on the server. It doesn't work like that. This is just a text file. You need to save it in your own possession. It won't go away. Okay. But I can save this somewhere and name it. I can copy and paste to it. I can <coughs> open it. I can also write all this in Notepad plus plus and bring it in. So I don't have a database in test. Well, actually, I may, but a a classroom go drop drop blah 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 blah. How many errors am I going to get? You zero me about seventeen. No, but I'm perfect. How many am I going to get? Two. I'm going to get two errors. That's exactly right. Oh, actually, I may not because I might have done this yesterday. No, no, I think I will. Yep. I got an error for drop table dog because it's like, you don't have a table dog. I'm going to get an error for drop table owner because it's going to say, you don't have a table owner either. That's okay. Not all errors are bad. Actually, no errors are bad. Right? It's true. Errors are informative, and if you caption them, they're wonderful. Okay. How many errors am I going to get when I click this is the next time? None. None, because those tables exist. So when you run your script the first time, you're going to get a couple errors. Because you're like, I don't know what you're doing. But every time thereafter, that script's going to run all day long. So don't be freaked out when you see those first two errors. Now if I come over here to AA Classroom, Tables, you see I have Dog. Is that what we made this dog yet? Dog. And I have Owner. I'm just looking at all the things I have in there. A mouse, apparently. Um, I should get rid of that. Maybe. I probably should. Okay. So this is how we write a table. We views. We draw our tables. Now, I want to teach you some biology. And because I've been watching um, Mindhunter, a little bit of serial killer attitude as well. Okay. You have to have parents before you can make children. That's your biology lesson. You have to make the parent tables before you make the child tables. You can't make a foreign key reference to a primary key that doesn't exist. So you have to have parents to make children. Here, we kill the children first. That's my mind on reference. Okay? You've got to kill the children and the parents, otherwise it's going to stop, right? If a dog, I mean, owner owns a dog, and owner 17 has a dog, and you go to, you go to get rid of owner 17, on the least restrict, it's going to say you can't. Well, geez, if I get rid of the whole table owner, on the least restrict, it's going to say you can't. These dogs are referencing that table. You gotta kill the dogs and kill the owners. Okay? Another way to think about this is when you make your script, make a table with your constraints, and then put the drop statement up here, and then run it until it works. Make your next table. Put your next drop above, run it, make sure it works, rinse, repeat. Now you might be feeling all snowflake and be like, I'll oh, just type this out, I'll watch the next place, I got this. And then you can go ahead and deal with the errors. It might work out for you. If I did that, I would be in tears by 2 a.m. It's not going to work. Okay. Here's how I would do a column, a val a column level constraint. Did you have a question? Sorry, I said alter table test, add constraint, I give it a name, like test underscore check. Check that this attribute equals this or this attribute equals that. That's how we would enforce them. But again, you're, you're just looking for a beat from your developer. Okay, so what you're going to do is make a script for your class. You're going to name it ddl1.text. You're going to have a use statement at the top, drop statements, right? I'll warn you again, I haven't changed homework in forever, so if you just give this to somebody else, good luck and Godspeed. Oh, by the way, I was, I was thinking, we we're talking with someone for class, and I think here's what we're going to do for exam two. I told you so many times it's going to be this, 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 and the other, but today, this week and next week, I'm going to teach you SQL, but Let's go ahead and push all the SQL off to exam three. So it's just one topic. I like that idea better. Let's not mix. So what we'll do is I'm going to teach you the stuff this week and next week. And then right after Thanksgiving, I'll come back and refresh this before the test. So let's get the knowledge now. But you're, this won't be on your test. So if I don't ignore it, it will be eventually. But let's, I want to keep the test. You guys did really good on exam one overall. So let's, let's keep exam two nicely packaged. And then three will just be all the Cody stuff, right? This is my thoughts. So this is what we're going to do. I, I like it. I feel better about it. Okay. You have to do this on my server. Don't. 
Okay, let's just get rid of two things right now. Has to be on my server, no need to be on any other interface than Microsoft SQL Server. Okay? Just no. Okay. Here's your ERD. And I'm a wonderful human being, so I've actually given you the data types for everything. You don't have to guess about a darn thing. Have to have parents to make children. That and this have to precede that. This and this have to precede that. That has to be dropped before I drop that, right? You have to figure that out. <laughs> Don't worry about nulls and not nulls for, for various things. Don't care. Okay, here's some tips. Your foreign key and your, prime, your reference primary key have to have the same data type. And you might be like, duh, but trust me, this is a good tip. Parents and four children, it's gonna be one script, use your go statement, really the only go you should need is the use statement, and to make sure you save it somewhere. If you really wanna, you know, if you wanna do it right, you could go ahead and do this, say if exists, select one from sys tables for name equal, the name of your table, drop the table, um, otherwise it won't. I mean, you can put a conditional in front of it, and that's how you would in SQL Server, and literally not saying you need to do this, but if you wanna be a snowflake, go for it. I mean, I put them on a slide, I'm clearly snowflakey that way. Because errors, man, anybody else feel want to talk about with errors? Errors are great, I mean, just, God, I love them. Just, you can grab them and do things. Error trapping is probably my favorite part of programming. Okay, help, my script won't run. You left out a semicolon. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. That is answer number one. Really, it is. Nope, still is. You just, you forgot a semicolon. You made up your own data type because you're in C sharp or you do C or whatever and you're like, I freaked out and made a data type that I, yeah. You have a typo. Take the person in your life who doesn't do IS, who thinks that you're a geek but loves you anyway, and have them look at your script and they'll just look at you and go, that looks wrong. And after three hours, you troubleshoot them and be like, it's not a typo. And they'll be right every single time. Typos are solved by the people who love you who aren't IT people. We can use comments. Comments are wonderful. We love comments so much. Let's look at a comment. I can do it a couple ways. I can do a forward slash asterisk, asterisk, forward slash, and comment on wall. But, I mean, I am using an IDE, so how about I just highlight all of it and click this button right here? I, I can just really comment the tail side of it. Oh, the undo button. Woo! That's what you do at 2 a.m. in the morning. It's like so the artificial, like whatever. <laughs> right? That's actually my go-to move when I go sit here looking at the script and I'm frustrated. I'll sit there and play it like whack. Also, um, pro tip, control E executes. So if you, you, know, you reach a point in your life where you're like control E is everything. Okay? Um, and, and more helpful than anything is just the dash dash. Dash dash takes out lines more of the time. To be honest, I don't actually use this in a functional way. I've been playing with it. Um, I'm one more likely to just crank out some lines. You could write the whole script and actually um, comment out you know, everything but the first and so on and so forth, but if that's how you like to debug. I'm not gonna tell you how to debug. It's a personal thing, man. Um, and then the foreign key constraint is half real unique. That will bite you on this program, on this uh, assignment of the um, Things I said about Go. Okay, oh, and I gotta talk about schemes. Just so you know what's happening here. So, database management systems are all a little bit different. Um, Microsoft SQL Server used to say like this. So you're a user and you can have a database and a database can have tables. And then they said, that's not altogether the best thing for permissions because you're not gonna necessarily, if you can, but you're not gonna necessarily share your credentials and then you're giving permissions to your whole database, your tables, you're like, let's do this instead. You're a user and then there'll be a thing called a schema and a schema is like a Tupperware bowl. And then you have a database and the database has tables. And they said you can, while all your tables are in a database, your tables are ultimately assigned to a schema. You can put them in a Tupperware bowl. By default, the schema is DBO. And this is why I could say create table owner 
and it's going to make it dbo.owner. So you're going to see dbo in front of everything that you do. We could, if we wanted to, create another schema. We could create lots of schemas. And they don't even have to be three letters. But I could say create schema gem. And if I did that, and I said create table gem.owner, down here there would be gem.owner as another table that is differentiated from, from dbo.owner. So schemas are super powerful. Again, I don't like to take us off a very narrow path, so we're not going to do anything with them. But if you want to, you're certainly welcome to make your own schema for things. You'll just have to qualify every time you reference a table, which is why I've never had a student take me up on this and be like, oh, I really want to do that. But you can if you want. And they're super powerful. And if you go out in the world, you may very well see, very well see schemas used. And I want you to be aware of what they are. OK, they're just an extra, part, an extra container. What's nice about a schema is I can assign rights to a schema to her. And now she has access to all the things inside the schema, not necessarily to my whole database. It's so just a way to partition stuff off. Okay. So we're going to do this, and this whole thing about schemas will come into play when we, when I give you, I want to give you scripts with data when we start doing queries. And I'm going to tell you this now, just because it's on my mind. I'll tell you again later when it is pertains. When we get around in four weeks or whatever to doing queries, I want to give you a script with data. You're going to run it. And then we'll do queries. Let's say that's homework one. Homework two has some of the same table names. If you just then run homework two, drop, 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 it'll drop a couple, three of those tables, and then put a whole bunch of new tables in, and then life will go to hell for you because it didn't clear up all those little tables. What I'm telling you is, when I give you a script to run, not relevant right now, but relevant in a few weeks, and you do a homework exercise, before we move on to the next one, go to that first script and run all the drops and make sure that you're nice, clean slate before you run the next script. Because I did not take care to ensure that my drop statements don't cause conflicts. I'm not about to care enough to go back and fix that. Okay. Besides which, the good habit I want you to think about keeping your rates clean. Right now, as you make your script and you make your tables, don't delete them, because I'll be out there watching and making sure that you've done this stuff. Right. And if you ever get super stuck and you send me that 11:30 email help, I can always pop onto your account because I'm obviously the admin of all the things, and I can actually help you. Not in real time. It's not like that, but you get what I'm saying, right? Do you have any questions at all? Yes, sir. The drop table, can you kind of go through what that it so, actually does? Which drop, table? Drop table, what that statement does? It gets rid of my table. Okay. So here's dog, right? Drop table dog. Oh, anything I highlight in SQL Server, when I hit execute, I'm just going to highlight the code. Draw table dog. Now, he did change it because this doesn't automatically update. Right click on tables, refresh. Dog's gone. So I do this because I want my script to, so let's say that I'm a developer. I pull down some code, I'm running against the data, and do something destructive to my copy of the direction database. And then I move on. I'm going to go ahead and run the script, flush it out, take a little bit of the data. Right? And like I say, even on the production level, everything we do goes in the script so that it's in the code repository, so that we pass our audits, and also so we have a living memory and won't be hit. It's never, ever. I'm just, I'm going to just write me some code. It is if you're a, you know, making Android apps or something like that. But in the corporate world, not. And we have a paper trail for everything. Any other questions? That's all. I wait. Not a question, but on drop table, they added where you can put if exists just after that, and it'll check. So it'll run the first time. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, OK. Well, I'm going to stay in my 1950s model over here. <laughs> yeah. This interface actually, to, by the way, I'm showing you like 1% of the power of the interface. It's, it's, I'm not a Microsoft fan. I mean, really, I'm not. But I love this. SQL Server is brilliant. The interface is brilliant. There's just no, I don't have a criticism of this. I'm stunned that the same organization that has this spawn the horrible thing that it's access. It just blows my mind. This is beautiful and awesome. And if you want to get into DBA, start here. To get into Oracle, you really legit kind of need to be certified or have someone who's going to pay for that. It's stupid, way too 
way too expensive just to like, I'll pay for that myself. Oh, hell no. Right? Start here, and you can get chops without being certified. It's a good junior DBA to start. And if you're a developer, of course, you can here or anywhere else. Any other questions? Because I have nothing else that I need of you today. If at any point, honestly, and if you're feeling that I'm running classes too short, use the anonymous oxing and just be like, seriously, can we get a little more value for the money? And oh, by God, I will, I will flesh out our days. And it's not a threat, it's just a promise, man. I will flesh out our days with material so thoroughly. I'll regret it, but no, no, send me the email. Right? You can come ask me any questions that you want. I'm, I'm here for you. Don't shut the